Okay, you're probably wondering where the YouTube criminal's iceberg is. That one won the poll, right? Well, that's true, but after going through everything and reading up on the entries, I deemed that it just didn't make for an interesting video. Also, I realized after the fact that someone uploaded a YouTube criminal's iceberg before and it blew up, so I'm going to steer clear. Instead, today I'm going to be talking about 4chan and some of the conspiracy theories that are held on the site. Now, let it be known that I do not use 4chan. I'm not that far down the internet rabbit hole, but luckily for me, the iceberg actually has an explanation for each entry, so hopefully we can both appeal to the 4chan users and the rest of the general populace. We're going to start off light and breezy, but as things progress, theories here are going to get a bit more obscure and dark. That's the way the iceberg chart works, if you didn't know. Anyways, this intro is getting a bit too long, so let's jump right into things. So without further ado, this is the 4chan's conspiracy theories iceberg explained. First up, we have UFOs. Since ancient times, some people have reported seeing unexplainable flying objects around in the sky. These objects are often described differently, whether that be about their shape, size or sound, but are generally described as metallic, curved and that they fly around in strange ways, foreign to human physics. The government is often very quick to dismiss UFO sightings and this is why many 4chaners think that this is a conspiracy theory. As we go down here, I'm sure you'll see that a lot of these theories are based on mistrust of the government and those at the top. Chemtrails! I would have thought that at some point I would have spoken about chemtrails, but so far on this channel I haven't. So if you don't know, the theory is that those white gas-like trails that planes leave behind aren't naturally made by planes flying, but instead they're a gaseous chemical produced by the government that's meant to control our minds. It's an interesting theory and I don't have too much more to add, but again, a lot of it boils down to 4chan's mistrust of the government. The case of Elisa Lam is extremely sad and I guess it's setting the tone for the rest of this video because something so dark being the third entry is very upsetting, so please, this is a content warning. If at any point you feel uncomfortable, click off the video. So in case you don't know, Elisa Lam was a 21 year old woman who lived in Canada. She had been staying at a hotel in California when she was reported missing at the beginning of February 2013. Interest around her case began growing after a video was released showing her last known whereabouts, in which she was trying to get into a lift while in clear distress. We don't know what she was concerned with or what she was running or hiding from, if anyone or anything at all. Something that she might have been talking or interacting with someone outside the lift, but nobody else was caught on video. She was found five days after the release of the video in a water tank after it's complained that there was low water pressure in the hotel and that the water was black. She had been in there for some time and residents had been unknowingly drinking the water that she was decomposing in. It's thought that she accidentally drowned with lamb suffering from bipolar disorder. This was thought to be a major factor in her death. But some on 4chan and elsewhere around the internet believe that her strange movements are no mere coincidence and that perhaps she was murdered instead, even if the autopsy states there was no sign of sexual assault or murder. Ghosts are not exclusive to 4chan, but they are on the iceberg, so I'll cover the entry anyways. Ghosts are the idea that after someone dies, their soul or essence doesn't pass on to heaven or hell. I know that in screenwriting, the use of a ghost in your story is meant to tell a narrative of unfinished business, of regret and unresolved conflict. This is generally deemed to be the same idea in life too, as it's often used as an alternative to purgatory, because in order to move on, you need to atone for some misdeed you did when you were alive, otherwise you'll be stuck as a ghost forever, doomed to wander the earth, just blowing doors open and all that. <laughs> Flat Earth Theory While again this theory isn't exclusive to 4chan, there are a few good members on the website that believe in Flat Earth Theory. If you somehow haven't heard of it before, this ludicrous idea is that the world isn't spherical like has been proven, but is instead flat. Antarctica conveniently circles the world to stop all the water falling off. Bonkers theory that has no basis in reality or science. I'm not going to give it any more time, I'm just going to move on. Fully rigged elections. So it says here that the claim that 4chan has is that if the government wanted to rig an election, they would definitely have the means and motive of doing so. An election would make people think that they had the illusion of choice and would allow those at the top to maintain their power and influence over the masses without threat of people uniting to overthrow them. According to this entry, in a large country, one vote is essentially meaningless, and I beg to differ, but the explanation on the iceberg says that one vote is uh, essentially worthless, which would make people 
be fooled into thinking that they actually have a choice. Without trying to get too political, I do disagree with the fact that a single person's vote is useless. I think that you should always exercise your democratic rights to vote once every three to five years, but this state's different. I would also make the argument here that if Bill Clinton can't keep a a secret from the American public, or Matt Hancock can't keep a cheeky ass grab under wraps from the British public, the idea that an election could be rigged is extremely unlikely, but many 4 channels will beg to differ, again, because of their mistrust of their respective governments. And let's go further into this idea, because this next entry might prove uh, a reason why they would be, because MK Ultra is the next entry on this iceberg. MKUltra was the codename given to a program of experiments on human subjects that were designed and undertaken by the US Central Intelligence Agency, or CIA, some of which were illegal. The idea was that the CIA were doing tests into the human mind to try and find out, and this will sound far-fetched, if they can be controlled. It's disgusting that this was even thought about, let alone acted upon, but from what I'm aware, this actually did happen. MKUltra used numerous methods to try and manipulate its subjects' mental states and brain functions. Techniques included the administration of high doses of psychoactive drugs, especially LSD, and other chemicals, electroshocks, hypnosis, sensory deprivation, isolation, and verbal and sexual abuse, in addition to many other forms of torture. The operation was apparently shut down back in the 70s, and evidence was eradicated before a formal investigation could take place. But there are many around the internet, and particularly on 4chan, that theorize that the project is still around to this day. Whether or not it is, is debatable, but regardless, this is honestly one of the most disgusting things I have ever read, with many subjects being unwilling citizens. It was just a complete misuse of power in the highest regard. This MK Ultra theory leads into a few other theories, one of which being the American school system experiments. From what I found online, there are about 20 million monthly 4chan users, 11 million of which are from the USA, so many of these theories are exclusive to the United States. Now, school around many parts of the world is often seen as quite a positive thing. Many countries have relaxed and nurturing schools. The USA's school system in comparison is generally regarded as a bit worse, even though it does yield high results. In some cases, you know, not all cases, but in some. Many students complain about bullying, unfair courses, lazy teachers, bad school meals, and very strict and specific rules. Essentially, the school system is a source of anger and contempt for many, while it should be a place of nurture and support. This has led many on 4chan to theorize that perhaps this is down to some sort of government experiment. The hive minds and lone wolves of the American school system are very hard to explain, and some think that it could be part of a greater government agenda. Whether this has any basis in reality is debated, but some members of 4chan take up strong opinions on the matter. Depression override theory is a fascinating one for sure. So, physical pain and depression hurts, we all know this. A natural reaction from a human to anything that might harm us is to either eliminate it or stay away uh, you know, fight or flight theory. A fire, for example, will burn us, and that would hurt, so most people will run away from a fire, and eventually those who are trained to deal with the fire will eliminate it. Well, 4chan has proposed a theory that the fear of pain can be eliminated, and this is why some people have fantasies that involve receiving pain. The trick is to drown out a bad stimulus, aka the pain, and replace it with a good stimulus, aka pleasure, a natural painkiller. Could this work? I wouldn't know, but I would definitely recommend having a think about it. Solitary Mind Decay is another 4chan theory, and one that I actually think has a lot of potential. It's also one reason why I think solitary confinement is absolutely inhumane, and that's because whilst testing MK Ultra, one thing that was tested was that if someone isolated from society for a long period of time, in a room with no noise, with everything around them looking the same, what seemed to happen was the brain would play tricks on the participant, causing them to hallucinate with extreme power. This led to paranoia and eventually memory loss. It led to the conclusion that the brain needs to be active because otherwise it would brainwash a person and it needs a variance and socialization to stay healthy. I think that Vsauce actually tested this out in one of his videos uh, and of all the theories so far, this one absolutely makes the most sense to me. Michael from Vsauce, for example, was cracking after 72 hours. I mean, imagine a week or a month. We are social creatures with big brains that need stimulation. Otherwise, it begins to do it for us, and that's at least what I think, but come to your own conclusions. The Brazilian SpongeBob 
broadcast. This is a very interesting one to me due to the relatively few online articles or videos about it. But the Brazilian SpongeBob broadcast apparently happened a few years ago, and it happened due to a broadcasting error. The long and short of it is that this broadcasting error was of both audio and visual cause, and it caused viewers to defecate themselves. The source of this story is unknown. What actually happened, well, is also unknown, and I'm skeptical about its legitimacy, but if it did happen, did someone know prior? Is there a way to optionally induce someone to crap themselves? Who was behind this? And was it some sort of mind control or was it rather a brown note? It's unexplained despite 4chan making theories and discussing the incident. Some say the Olympics covered it up, others argue that it never happened, but it's interesting nonetheless. The internet psyop is a generally known about entry, but it's still worth going over because if it's true, it would be the biggest invasion of privacy known to man. The idea that some 4chan and other conspiracy theorists have said is that everything that Edward Snowden said was true and that the US government specifically is continually spying on its citizens via webcams and microphones, listening in on phone calls, even private data such as photos and passwords are accessible to them. Every time you go onto a website, they know. Every time you log into an account, buy something online, leave a comment, send a message, they know. This large data collection is then used to study humanity, but for what reason, we do not yet know. For good or for ill, it's unclear, and the true intentions of this data collection could vary. AI bot bandwagons follow suit from the internet psyop idea and dictates that with all of this data, AI could become extremely powerful, oftentimes knowing what we want before we know we want it. Many times we get advertisements that an algorithm has predicted that we'd like to see. I know that I click on ads and sponsorships every now and then, and so the question has to be asked, could AI convince us that we like a trend? Could AI, for example, have made fidget spinners or Fortnite popular by crafting the correct responses and posts to be as effective as possible? It could perhaps be a possibility, and one that 4chan has latched onto, discussing it at length. The human organ's true purpose is a theory that I find a bit far-fetched, but I'll let you listen to the argument that 4chan has proposed. So back in ancient times, studying a deceased human's body was forbidden because it was deemed as disrespectful. However, in comparison, the modern day does study the human body, and this is justified because we say that it allows us to discover the secrets of the human body and gives us a reason and rationale into our biology. Now, going back to ancient times, sometimes rogue doctors would examine dead bodies, and they attributed purposes to different body parts, different to what we say today. For example, back in ancient times, they would have said that blood and bile were the essence of the soul and human emotion, or that the brain was responsible for creating mucus in the nose. These theories have been dismissed by modern science, but what if we've been lied to by modern scientists? What if the ancient doctors had it right and our organs have different uses and functions to what we're being told? As I said before, this isn't something that I believe in. This theory compared to a few of the more recent ones is just a bit too far-fetched. But as with a lot of things, we just have to trust those who are in charge and believe what they say is true. Okay, I'm gonna get into the racism virus theory next, but just remember, race and racism is a very touchy and emotional subject, so let's all just be mature about this theory, okay? Again, none of these are my opinions, I'm just passing on 4chan theories. So, some 4chaners believe that racism could be born via virus rather than learned. The idea is that it is inherited passed down through the genes, and therefore people are born with racial biases with preconceived notions about others. The idea is that an undetectable virus was sent out and infected people all over the world. The reason behind this is unknown, but even this entry states, however, that there isn't much evidence of this, aside from random acts of racist outbursts that occurred throughout history for no reason. Okay, we're getting quite deep down this iceberg because the next entry is that true equals false. This is by saying that a logical conclusion is that all things are true and all things are false. This could mean that all conspiracy theories are true, and all conspiracy theories are false. This entry later goes on to say that the best way to understand this is to delve deeper into philosophy, and so I have to ask, do we have any philosophers in the crowd? If so, do you have any idea what this means? Because I have no clue. This is gibberish to me. Something being true and being false is mutually exclusive by definition. If something happened, it couldn't have not happened. If something happened, it happened. If something didn't happen, it therefore couldn't have happened. 
I wish I could give a better response to this, but I think that you'll find as we keep on going down this iceberg, the lower things go, the more gibberish we'll be seeing. The Neanderthal theory that 4chan has proposed is one that's very different to the one that I subscribe to, and at least in my opinion, it actually sounds a bit fan fiction y, but again, I'll tell you the story before we delve into my thoughts. So, Neanderthals, if you didn't know, were the species with the closest common ancestor to humans. Back in the prehistoric times, humans had a few relatives wandering about, the most famous of which being the Homo erectus, the Homo forensiensis, but most of all the Neanderthal which survived the longest of the three, only dying out about 40,000 years ago. We know that the Neanderthal migrated out of Africa with humans, living in Europe until their extinction, and we also know that the Neanderthals cared for their injured and buried their dead. They were also much, much stronger than man, and despite being much shorter, their muscle mass was much greater. Now, some people on 4chan believe that they had complex language, just like human, and perhaps even religion. The theory states that humans and Neanderthals attended church together, or what would be church, when there was apparently a schism. Some argument that the entry doesn't go into detail in, but uh, apparently it happened, which led to man and Neanderthal going to war, and man eventually to prevail, killing off all of the Neanderthals. So let me say that I am not an expert on the extinction of Neanderthal. Not many people are because we don't know exactly, but I have done research into the matter because their existence and extinction fascinates me. The general theories are that A, humans went to war with them and they died because of that, which I'm more skeptical of, as while man did have an advantage with communication, the Neanderthal man was much stronger than the human. Then we have option B, that they died to illnesses carried by humans, similar to many of the natives. It could be a mixture of A and B, more closely similar to the Native Americans. There is option C, that they died by inbreeding because their groups were too small, but that even begs the question of why their groups weren't bigger in the first place, what happened to them prior to that, why did their numbers get so low, so that they had to resort to inbreeding. And there's also option D, which is Salmonella's sexy Neanderthal theory, which is based more on sexual selection and the idea that in mammals, due to childbirth being much more taxing on the woman than it is the man, they have to choose the man with the best genes to pass on. And because the Neanderthals were much more traditionally masculine than men, they would more likely breed with the human females who are more traditionally feminine than Neanderthal women. This led human men who didn't care so much about who they were with as long as they got to smash with the Neanderthal women who were more masculine traditionally. And so if at any point the groups collided, the human women would go with the Neanderthal men and the Neanderthal women would go with the human men. This meant that extinction through breeding between species was more likely, and this is aided by the fact that Europeans and Asians oftentimes have Neanderthal DNA in their system, typically somewhere between 1 and 3%. It could of course be a mixture of all these reasons, that they were outmatched when it came to hunting for resources, that children died young after being inbred, that they died due to disease, and that the survivors mated with humans, leaving their DNA to be inside us. I just thought that I would debunk the church spat theory because it just sounds like an urban legend rather than being anything based on science, history, or anthropology. Anyways, we're gonna go from the earliest humans to the final understanding, which is beyond top secret. Do not attempt to research it after this video because you won't get anywhere. And by the way, we're about to get existential. So anyways, if you were to look in front of you, does anything have meaning, truly? Does knowledge truly exist? Just look in front of you without thought. Is knowledge just a mere use of the senses? And is there any true value to thoughts other than organizing your emotions? To begin the final understanding, you must lose the concept of thinking entirely. I'm glad that we finally know about the final understanding and that nothing else can ever replace it. Anyways, up next we have the true final understanding. Take everything you thought you knew about the final understanding and throw it out of the window because it's complete shite. Because the true final understanding is beyond, beyond classification. To know is not to know. To be is not to be. Before time, with time, and after time is the final understanding. The impossible must happen. The possible must never happen. Behold, your place is not a place. Ah, oh, finally, all right, at long last, we know the true final understanding and nothing else can ever replace that. The infinity paradox. Infinity isn't real and neither is the true final understanding. Well, f the control paradox, also known as the great surprise. 
Those who falsely think that they know cannot learn because they have researched the spot in their memories for lies. The ones who falsely think that they know cannot know because they do not know. The ones who falsely think that they know think that their life is under control, think that they have it all figured out. They will be surprised. Do not be surprised. And I wish I could bring you guys the final entries on this iceberg, but unfortunately I can't because these entries have been classified and you should never dig too deep. After this wild ride, I neither know or don't know any possibilities that could or could not be there. So anyways, that is it from me. There was a lot of fun stuff here. So if you enjoyed this video, would you mind subscribing? We have a lot more videos just like this one and we'd love for you to be a part of the community. Also, I've got my 10K special coming out very soon. I just need my camera to be delivered. Uh, and because I got COVID, I can't go and get it. So hopefully that will be in the coming days or weeks. Anyways, follow me on all of my socials. That's my Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. Join the Discord, link in the description as always. Shout out to my patrons, Cage101101 and Chris M, who are both serious legends. And also a huge shout out to K99356, who not only created this fantastic iceberg, but also put all of the descriptions on the iceberg itself. So research here was incredibly easy and simple. Thank you so much. Major shout out to you. And finally, let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see me do next, as I'm only 59 videos in and I'm already out of ideas. Thank you for watching.